So, so what, 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 am I, what am I talking about here today? I actually have some points. I hope you took them down. Number one, this is what this series is all about. Dare to believe. We've said some things over these last few weeks that unless you think we're all cuckoo together, you think it's crazy. But there were signs. I'll get back to it in a second here, okay? Number one, this is dare to believe. I mean, we're continuing. We're still building with this. And with the other books. And with the broadcast. Now, okay. So, number two, you have to understand the collection of genre that is in the Word of God. And you've got to understand the time zones and the different governments of those time zones or dispensations. If not, you run back and forth through time like a crazy time traveler that does not have a Dolores to take you. <clears throat> Hello. Back to the future. Back and forth. Praise God. Hallelujah. You out there? Thank you, Lord. Whew. Hallelujah. Number three. That's the, excuse me. That's dispensations. Number three. Number four. What is a sign? How does the signs operate? We've gone through signs now. Now, we're going to run quickly here. Uh, hallelujah, Lord. Help me. And five. GHM. A ministry of signs. This ministry has been a ministry that God has graciously used to provide signs for the future. On Sunday, October 19, 1986, when the Lord flooded into my little house there in Newton Lake in South Africa, He gave me a prophetic encounter. He allowed me to see the move. It's coming, everything, but it's a sign. He said the joy will start breaking forth in the church. Go to America and begin to release my joy in the church wherever the door opens. Do it. And I did, and he did, and we did, and we all did. And most of you were in those meetings, thousands upon thousands of thousands of people in seven different nations and over 20 states of the United States outpouring of God night after night after night. We carried people drunk out of every church. There was not a church God went into that we went into that God did not fall night after night after night after night after night after night after night. After night. Why? Because the joy revival, and of course, Brother Rodney and others, the, raw, the joy revival was a sign. It was a sign of the coming revolution of fire and glory. Uh -oh. Sign. Oh my God. All, all here. Every broadcast, I don't know, I can't even count them. Every broadcast we have on YouTube and MyTube and YouTube, all of them together, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I'm convinced over a thousand that we have over a thousand. Yes, it is. From 2012 onward, it is over a thousand. That every single week, except once in a while we have to break, we would bring you the pertinent, practical, applicable, down-to-earth, fresh in life, ready for today, prophetic message of God for the last days. Then in 2017, God began to say, okay, now you've got to put it together with the apostolic and put it all in one book, 400 pages, so we know nobody would read it but those who are hungry. And then after that, more apostolic, more apostolic, more apostolic. So much needs to be corrected. The time is short. So little time available. you got to correct this whole system of Christianity. And you got to destroy Antichrist Christianity and give the church true Christianity. Now, many people are preaching these are the last days. We're right at the end. The outpouring is coming. The fire is coming. The glory is coming. The end time revival is coming. It's on its way in. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God we got people there and ministries all over the world and agree with us. But nobody is teaching true Christianity, which is the apostolic life of Christianity. The Lord said, let's teach on it, video after video after video after video. And he said, write a book. So we put the book out there. Hallelujah. It's a sign. 
true Christianity is a sign to how the church will live once the fire and the glory has been poured out on the church. Hello. God's golden glory revolution is how the whole church will live once the fire and the glory has gone through. And then the glory of the Lord will from us. I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into Isaiah 60. I thought I'd get that today, but I won't. But we will, we will soon. The glory of God arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold. Darkness shall be in the earth and shall compel many people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you. The remnant. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Everything this ministry has done, specifically, particularly since 2007 in in capital letters, bolded and on the line since 2020, God said, go. You got three years. Go raise up the remnant. Obey me. Do this. Go to Phoenix. Release the fire season. Doesn't mean it starts the same day. Do it on September 22nd of 2022. So we went to Phoenix. We did it. It's a sign. In time to come, you'll go back and we'll see that's where it started. Of course, the fire hit a few people, but that was not the outpouring. But the season was opened up and the season was, season was introduced. People don't understand that. They say when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it before 7 o'clock tonight. But he sent us with the assignment to go to Phoenix and to go release and open and officially declare that the season of the outpouring of God's fire is now open. Thursday, September 22nd. 2022 and a few months ago the Lord said to me I want you to stand in the pulpit on September 22nd 2023 you are going to stand in the pulpit exactly a year after you release the fire of God and you are going to preach and pray for the people you are going to I said what do you want me to do he said go to Huntsville so a few days ago we're called First of all, called Maria, our board member fellowship with her quickly. And uh, and then, of course, we called uh, Pastor Rita Wickens. Hallelujah. Huntsville, yeah, not Texas, Alabama. As far as this Huntsville. Huntsville, Alabama. Awesome people, I'm telling you. So we will be, first announcement, we will be doing a meeting. What's Pastor Rita's church's name? I didn't write this down before, and I apologize. Madison, Madison, Madison Square Garden. Is it that big? Wow. Madison Worship Center. Madison Worship Center. Sorry, Pastor Rita. Madison Worship Center. We will be there. We will be doing a meeting. I will, by the grace of God, stand in the pulpit, not in Phoenix, but in Huntsville, exactly one year from the time that we release the fire for the nations on Friday, September 22nd, and then on Saturday, September 23rd. And then Pastor Rita said to me, do the Sunday morning for us and the Sunday night service. We announced it that far, and that's what the Lord said to me. I said, yes, sir. Talk to my wife about it. We got together. And there's the first announcement. Hallelujah. We are getting back on the road. And I want to tell you this right now. We're getting back on the road. Ain't going to stop there. These things are going to start coming. I, I, oh, my God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord said to me, people don't believe it because you say many things. Before this year is out, there is going to be some radical movement made by God in the spirit and in the natural. Hallelujah. Things are going to start moving. God's presence is going to start coming. We want to see people get filled with God, get filled with Holy Ghost, get filled with the glory of God, get filled with His presence. Hallelujah. Get filled, get strong, get bold. Hallelujah. Become remnant, get ready. So we are coming to Huntsville. Anybody that, that can... That can join us, Huntsville, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> I keep on forgetting to say because every state's got their own one. Huntsville, Alabama. Well, they got a aeronautical center, a NASA center, 
to do some work there. Huntsville, Alabama. It is going to be Friday, September 22nd, Saturday, September 23rd, Sunday, both services, 24th. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, September 22nd, 23rd, 24th. We are so excited. We are going to be in the city of Huntsville, Alabama. Hallelujah. And God is going to meet us there. He just, it's amazing how he said to me, I want you in the pulpit. I said to you one day, a few months ago, he said, I want you in the pulpit. I said, I know. He said, well, go then. I said, I said so, so, so where do I go? He said, and then he turned around. He said, no, I want you in the pulpit September 22nd. I said, okay, where do you want me to go? He said, go to Huntsville. I said, okay, we'll go to Huntsville. All right, so we're coming. First announcement, hallelujah. Now, let me say this to you. This is going to be an extremely important message. Meeting, excuse me. If you can be there, be there. It's just the weekend. Hallelujah. Great things are going to happen. Hallelujah. And so we talk about all that this ministry is in. The signs, the signs, the signs, the signs. All the things that have come to pass. The sign of the remnant. This remnant everywhere now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we are in the final preparations. <clears throat> Ooh, glory to God. Whew. I'm going to pick it up here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just pick it up here next week. It's very important. People, this ministry, through the Spirit of God, not my head or my wife's head, it's not us, our flesh, the ministry that God had graciously placed within the Spirit of Apostle Shelley and myself in apostolic, hallelujah, and in this tremendous team, Pastors Tim and Deb and Gigi, our office administrator, all of this will change as we move along. This ministry... I will close with this today, has been a ministry of integrity. We have preached to you the truth, New Testament truth, and only New Testament truth, so help me God. We have preached the good, the hard, difficult, everything. We have taught on the fire, the outpouring, the revival, the revolution, the remnant, the rising of the glory church, the climax of the ages, the glory of God, how all of this happens come, come to pass. We've been now we have and we'll come back to this next week. We have in this last week given you two signs regarding my wife, Apostle Shelley, and her place in this ministry. They're signs. People say, Well, you know, where's the scripture about Shelley? Well, it says there, you know, in Second Imaginations chapter six, verse eight, Shelley, you will be the sign. Not everything God's gonna do is in the is in the Bible, the Bible will be the size of, of heaven. I was always taught, you know, the word of God will teach you, will, will lead you. The word of God teaches you. Holy Spirit leads you. The word of God teaches you. If you live in the New Testament, the word of God teaches you, but it doesn't lead you. I found my name there. I needed some guidance. So I grabbed the Bible, look up there. Oh, there I am, Gabriel. Yay. God has put his personal word in the Bible for me. Oh, no, it's another Gabriel. It's another game. So I said, I said, well, where's the where's the guidance and instructions to personal to this Gabriel? They're in the spirit. They're inside Holy Spirit. They will confirm the word, but they're in Holy Spirit. The word teaches you. Or Holy Spirit teaches you the word of how to live the Christian life. Holy Spirit teaches you the word of how to live the Christian life. Then Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you by the specific instructions from time and time that He will give to your life as you live your life. That's where the church completely misses it. Well, I think this would be a good idea. This job would be good for my family. I should move to the city. All oh, everything is run from the meathead. But it's not by the tour of God. Holy Spirit's got a tour for you. He wants to take you on a tour, every Christian. The tour of destiny. Hallelujah. And when you walk with Him, He will tour you through your destiny on your path, which is nobody else on your path. That's why you can't be all written down in Scripture. It'll be this big a book, this in your, in your house, just all the all the. He teaches us the truth and how to live in the truth from the Word, to walk and live in the truth. That is by teaching. Then by guidance and leading you and talking to you and witness to you. He will lead you if you are in fellowship with Him and you walk with Him in that fellowship and you walk in relationship with Him. He will lead you and guide you. We say daily, you don't do God every day. 
Sometimes you get started with something, it might take a week or so, but any time in your future when it's time for you to have new guidance, He will be there, He will show up, He will tell you, He will lead you, you will guide, He will guide you, and you don't have to mess up your life and live some dumb, stupid, half-confused, messed up, miserable, unhappy, sad, depressing Christian life. Why does the church live that way? Because they have taken Holy Spirit and threw him out with the baby in the bathwater and said, well, you know, you just got to read the word and figure it out yourself. No, you got to read the word and say, Holy Spirit, be my teacher of the word. Teach me the life, the nature and the truth and the revelations of Christ that I can walk in them. Number two, walk with me as my friend and be my guide and my leader, helping me, leading me, showing me, telling me, turning me, taking me. Hallelujah. Let's go on this glorious journey together. Hallelujah. Jesus promised it. Jesus said, John 16, 13, but when he, the spirit, the person, the spirit person of the truth has come. He, he, Prophetic words, what everybody else feels, their interpretation of the Bible, what your pastor thinks, what the pastor's wife suggests, all of them will lead and guide you. No, no, no. He, but when He, the Spirit of truth is coming, He will guide you. He alone will guide you, will lead you and guide you into all truth. All. Well, that's what I'm supposed to get some from the prophet. No, the prophets will confirm as God wills. They're not the guide, they're the confirmer. Oh, you know, but I know these people all the time. They always prophesy over me. You're out of order. You're in error. Go back and read what Jesus said. This is why it's so important that the apostolic truth be restored to the church because the church is so out of order. Apostolically, with wrong, false, stupid, man-made imitating doctrines and completely out of whack, prophetically don't know what the time is, when we're living in, what's happening, where the heck we are, what's going on. That's why the church is defeated if she could have been by now. Thank God she can't be defeated. She's trying to defeat herself. The church, the devil, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and any dumb, dumb demon from hell, all working together to try and destroy the church. But Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, even when it looks like it's going down now. Just one nostril above the water is about, about to drown. Uh-uh. You don't pull this thing right out of the water, boy. I'm telling you. Pour fire on it. All the demons will run and scatter all the other side of hell. Then it will bring glory like a hoo hoo nuclear shoo, go off suddenly. And you will look like Jesus standing in the fullness of the measure of stature of Christ. And the Holy Spirit will say, what are you waiting for? Go get them. Here they come. Just like Isaiah said, they'll start running. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, for his glory shall arise upon you. Hallelujah. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Then they will come. The, the, the heathen will come from every nation, everywhere, run to you. Hallelujah. You don't even have to go get the harvest. The harvest will run to you. Because they see the glory and they come running into the glory. And it's the glory. People have this thing on every street corner. Somebody will stand preaching the Bible. Are you absolutely stupid and dumb and out of your mind? The glory of the Lord will hit over a billion people. And go to so many people, spread to so many people, they're instantly getting born again. The fire cleanses them, the glory fills them. Then they run and touch somebody. Then, as I tell you, you just get right in their presence. Boom! Hallelujah. And eventually, there will be so many of us, so many billions of us, that the, the scripture, the word of God will come to pass that says, The glory of the Lord shall fill the earth, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord when all five or six billion of the of the harvest is coming, because the harvest is the end time church, is the glorious church. See, see, the first remnant didn't get to this day. The first remnant that hits the fire of cleansing, and then we get the glory, we become the foundation of the glorious church, and this church structure spiritually is built upon us. Isaiah said, when they see you and they see the glory on you, they're going to start running to you. Here they come. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. But there are signs. And I'm going to come back to this um, next week, God willing, and explain the signs of the ministry. And particularly those two incredibly mind-blowing, incredible signs concerning my wife. People say, well, where's the scripture for that? There's no scripture for that except 
that God does things in signs. But there's not a scripture that has Shelley's name in it saying that. So people say, so what do we do now? It's very simple, people. When Jesus stood there outside the temple, on April 15th, of the year 29. And he knocked the crap out of them. And pulled all this stuff. And threw it out of the temple. And screamed at them. They said who the hell are you? What sign do you give us. That you can come in and do these things here. What sign do you give us. And he said I'll tell you what sign I'll give you. Destroy this temple. And I will raise it up in three days again. That was the sign. Was there a scripture for it? No. The sign doesn't have a scripture. It's a token. It's a promise that will come to pass. And every sign that God has given in the Old Testament and the days of Jesus, all of those signs, they've all come to pass. The sign of the, of the virgin birth. The sign of the Messiah. The sign of the crucifixion and death. The sign of the resurrection. The sign of the ascension. All of The sign of the outpouring of the Spirit. They were all signs that came to pass. And what the Lord said to us, and there'd be other signs God may give you signs about your family or not. Don't look for signs. Don't ever look at it. Come. I tell you, come. He'll, he'll, he wants you to have a sign. He's going to scream at you. Tell me. I tell you. Promise you. So what the Lord said about my wife in these last two weeks, we're going to come back to that next week. Oh, my God. 